All right, let's unload this Glock 19. There we go. Well, perfectly safe, right? No, it wasn't. We're going to do a little uh, video on gun safety. We all need reminding of the basic rules of gun safety, I think. We, we can't be reminded often enough, and we can't think about it often enough. Uh, every time we get near one of these, we have to have that foremost on our minds. Uh, I have no ammo with me, by the way. These are some of the uh, dummy rounds I've drilled out. I have them in this magazine. So there's no ammo in my pockets. There's no real ammo anywhere near. These are the ones that uh, I drilled the primer while there were, never was a primer. I just loaded these cases without powder and then I actually drilled that out too, just to, couldn't even put a primer in. So dummy rounds there and uh, nothing else anywhere. Uh, this gun is a no magazine. It's a toy gun, old airsoft I think. John's uh, from way, way, way back. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about gun safety and the four basic rules of gun safety. And I like to base it on uh, Cooper's basic rules of gun safety. Uh, these are generally attributed to him. You know, all guns are always loaded. At least they should be treated that way. Never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. And then of course, be sure of your target. Right. Know what the bullet will do. I have a parenthetical phrase there, you know, what the bullet will do. If it's a pellet, if it's a BB, you know, what's it going to do? BBs will bounce sometimes, or, or, whereas it might be even safe to shoot a real gun at something. BB would bounce back at you because they're not lead generally, they're you know, metal. So just different things like that. So, you know, they say that uh, the two loudest sounds are when you're expecting a bang and you hear a click or when you're expecting a click and you hear a bang. You don't want either one of those to happen. You don't want either one of those surprises, you know, ever. Uh, think about that if you don't quite understand what I said there. Okay, click, that's what you want to hear, right? All right, uh, all guns are always loaded. So, what that means is you have to assume they're loaded, don't you? That's the first rule of gun safety. Uh, I like to see actions open when they're on the table. Uh, the thing, that I like to do is exaggerate gun safety. And, uh, cause you're not doing it for just yourself. It's one thing for me to know that gun's unloaded. I, I mean, I may be a hundred percent certain, I know it is, but I need other people that are walking around or someone who walks up to know that. If I'm at a skeet range with my shotgun, that's why if you walk around a skeet range or something and you don't have that shotgun broken open, it doesn't matter if you don't even have any ammo left and you have that barrel filled with water. I don't know, there's nothing in it. It doesn't matter. The people seeing you don't know that. So you want to exaggerate it, demonstrate it, go overboard with it. Uh, okay, so they're always loaded. If that gun's lying down, you have to assume it, pick it up, check it carefully. You see me doing this a lot. I get comments. People wonder what I'm doing. It's like I'm, uh, I don't know, I have some, uh, some kind of obsession or something. I like to work slides. Well, that's part of the reason. I want to make sure if there's anything in there, it gets picked up. You know? So, and of course you want to look and eyeball it. But uh, if you lay the gun down, my basic rule is it's loaded now. If I take my hands off of it, it's loaded, and I've got to check it again. Uh, if, I lay, if I lay it down and, and I take my hands away, and I look away and do anything else, that gun's loaded, I check it. In fact, if I've had it in my hand for a minute and I haven't been thinking about something else or talking to somebody, you know, I want to check it again too. All right, so that gun's loaded, unless I see that it's not. Uh, always the truth, no matter where you see a gun, you don't put your finger on that trigger when you pick it up. If you're a youngster, you have not gotten involved with real firearms yet, I mean, you're watching these videos, because I know I have some pretty young people that tune into them, uh, you never put your finger on that trigger. That, that gun could be loaded. And it doesn't matter if it's loaded, if you think about it, that gun could be hot with 14, 15 rounds in it, it could have a round in the chamber, and it's cocked. But if I pick it up, and even if I violate uh, some of the safety rules, if I don't put my finger on that trigger, that gun will do nothing. Yeah, it's safe. It's not like a rattlesnake that might bite me anyway. I have to pull the trigger for it to fire. So I assume it's loaded, but then I don't put my finger on that trigger. All right. Number two, never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. Uh, how true, how true. This is uh, all part of just muzzle discipline, as they call it not letting the muzzle cover any part of your body or any place where you can't shoot you know uh, what i like to think of it as there is a, it's like a lightsaber or there's a laser 
in there, not just a laser sight. I mean a laser that actually would cut, say it, it cuts flesh. Maybe it won't cut that tree or anything. But if I sweep my arm with it, and let me get the uh, air saw out here. Either one, doesn't matter, we don't have ammo. But uh, if I sweep my arm, it's easy to do. You know, you, uh, let me put it back in the holster. Whoops, I just swept my hand. So I like to assume it would have cut my hand off. There's a laser coming out of that gun that would just cut my hand. If a friend was standing over there, same thing, he'd be cut. You know, so just take his arm off, take my arm off, take his head off, whatever. Okay, so try to get that into your head. I think it, it might help, it helped me. There's a laser beam coming out of that barrel that uh, will just cut human flesh, you know, slice it. So keep that mobile. One thing you see with some people on a range, it should really worry you, is this dangling business. If you're out to the farm with friends or something, same thing. Watch people, they're standing around with their guns hanging down by the side like that, that's not good. Dangling is a really uh, bad habit to get into, you know. I've seen people even, you know, pointing backwards like that. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy. I'm diving for the bushes if I see somebody do that. You want that gun out there pointed at least 45 degree angle, you know, into the dirt when you're messing with it, you know. When I'm shooting here, I try to keep the muzzle pointed into the hillside, you know, whatever I'm doing. I haven't done a formal, I've done a, a child safety thing, and I've not done something like this, I keep meaning to. What I do mainly, I try to do, is demonstrate gun safety in every video, just in the way I operate. Uh, but I felt like we could probably justify addressing it uh, in a video. So, whatever you're pointing at, just assume it's going to hit, it's going to go off. Assume it's going to go off on its own, although it doesn't do that unless you pull the trigger. But assume it's going to. There's a laser beam coming out of there. So you don't want to be pointing over that way at people, or that way at people, even upwards. Now sometimes people who've been in the military, they have a habit of, of pointing the gun upward. I know in uh, IPSC matches and things, we have to kind of, uh, at least we used to, I don't know if they've changed any of the rules or not, but a lot of guys that came out of the military, especially the old school guys, I think they're taught to point upward. And generally, if you're on a 14 million acre uh, military reservation, that's a pretty good uh, way to do it. But uh, but generally, uh, if you're on a private range or you know most places, you need to have the gun pointed in the berm, you know, because you've got people over there and houses over there and over that way, and so you generally want that muzzle pointed into the dirt, you know. Uh, that's kind of the rule of thumb, and not sweeping, as it's called, anybody, not sweeping your feet, not sweeping any part of your body, all right. So cover anything. Don't let the muzzle cover anything. You're not willing to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. When you pick it up and you're ready to shoot, you know, your finger is straight. Uh, if you're new to guns, you know, this is a sign of someone who knows guns. You should have that finger locked, just like right along the frame, all right? Just like, now, I, I have such a long finger, I can kind of put mine against the frame. A lot of people, their finger is like right here, so being straight might not be quite enough, but my finger extends beyond the trigger guard so much, it doesn't really, I don't have to really bring it up here, but. But anyway, lock straight. That's the main thing. And then as you go towards the target, right here, and boom, you know, and bring it out as you come back down. Have that kind of action, boom, you know, straight, straight. That's a sure sign of somebody that's not experienced that they don't have that habit of locking that trigger finger out. See somebody pick up a gun, uh, if it goes right into that trigger guard, it shows they're, they're pretty much an amateur. You know, you're looking at a gun in a gun shop, whatever you're doing, you know, the finger should be straight, okay? That's key, that's key, All right? And then be sure your target, because uh, you, know, you just never know whether you've got a rock behind it, you have uh, something that's gonna ricochet, you know, woo, up into the who knows where, and you know where you're shooting better than anybody else. You know how much land you're on, and what's behind you, and all that kind of thing. Of course, here I say this, it's shooting at steel, but uh, you know, I know where all the ricochets are gonna go, uh, I've covered that in other FAQs, how it's so, so rare to get anything back, you know, you got shooting glasses on, you're safe, as long as you're far enough away from them. Now, you're not going to see me stand down here shooting the steel. I mean, that'd <laughs> be suicidal. But uh, I think in IPSC, USPSA, you have to be 11 yards away. Cowboy shooting, uh, they get closer than that sometimes, but uh, generally shooting lighter stuff and it's just lead. But uh, you, you, you've seen the videos, you know I like, like to be back uh, uh, when I'm doing that and have you know, your, your glasses on. So uh, be sure what you're shooting at and as I mentioned here with uh, BBs and shotgun pellets, some people make a mistake with shotgun pellets because uh, you shoot some things like a, I don't know, even a really hard dead tree or something, it may not go in, it may bounce back. 
uh, bowling pins. Uh, bowling pins make great targets, but you've got to be careful. You shoot them with a shotgun sometimes, and uh, you don't want to be too close. Sometimes a pellet will, uh, will come back at you, just as with a BB, because they are really tough. It's very, very tough plastic, as you can imagine, on there. But these are the four basic rules of, of gun safety that, that, that Cooper touted, and with, uh, with good reason. They work. Just make sure you don't ever look at that gun as if it's unloaded. you got to pick it up and you've got to check it if you're authorized. If you're not authorized, if you're a young person, you come across a firearm that maybe your dad or an uncle left lying around, you just don't touch it. You just don't touch it. Tell an adult. And if it's a gun you're allowed to, you're authorized to touch, same thing. You're going to check it. Pull the magazine out if it's a semi-automatic. And uh, the round that gets people occasionally is the ones in the chamber. That's why I started the video with that. Uh, because that gun is loaded until you check that chamber. All right. If you're not safe, you shouldn't be messing with the guns. Uh, and if you think there's something macho about not being safe, that's kind of like the, the macho idea of not wearing ear protection or glasses or something. There's nothing macho about that. That doesn't mean you're tough. Uh, overdo the safety and you can continue to enjoy the sport just like uh, we've been able to do for decades and decades and decades. So, hope that's useful, you young people especially. Uh, I'll put these four rules in, in the description of this video and you, know, you might want to, this is actually a posting, I, I used to have a gun club and, uh, for, for youngsters and this is actually a handout that I would give them and uh, I had this one laminated and stuck here on the range but uh, I'll, I'll post those on the description and uh, please, please uh, live by those uh, so that you can shoot safely. So hope that was useful and uh, we'll see you guys later.